Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is our second uh, online meetup for Pulse. So um, we are uh, 24 participants for the moment. Um, so welcome again. This is uh, the, the second uh, learning session where uh, Anne Baudouin, Victor Le Pape, and uh, Erwin Sotiri are going to give as an introduction to um, Pulse governance. Okay, now um, just to recall quickly, um, so uh, there is uh, this uh, GDPR disclaimer that tells you that uh, we are recording this session and that by your participation you agree that uh, we record this and that we use that material uh, on our social, on the social media of, uh, and the website of uh, Let's Block. Um, some householding rules. So when you join uh, the session here uh, on Zoom, you are muted from our side, but you can unmute yourself. Um, I propose that uh, you remain muted. And then uh, if you uh, would like to intervene, uh, if you have a question, you can put your question in uh, the chat or raise your hand and then uh, we'll uh, mute and unmute you from, from our side. Um, so yeah, again, the webinar is recorded. A uh, little recall, um, the material from past sessions is published on uh, Let's Block's uh, website. So on letsblog.com slash past sessions, you can find uh, already the uh, presentations and the video recordings from the past two sessions. Today's session will be added uh, very soon. Then a um, little recall uh, of our communication uh, channels for the Pulse uh, session. That is um, the Slack uh, member channel number four, Pulse. So please uh, don't hesitate to go there because um, the technical teams, um, the technical team uh, with Sorin and his colleagues, and then governance team and uh, the applications team uh, will in the coming weeks uh, engage more on that channel and uh, publish material and start interacting and uh, also being available for uh, potential questions from, from your side um, with the eye on uh, the implementation of uh, Pulse and the launch of the uh, network nodes. Then uh, there is also communication uh, for upcoming sessions on the website and then we also communicate through meetup.com. Um, these are the dates of the upcoming sessions. Now we are um, playing with the idea to um, speed up these sessions. So um, we would like to, to ask your feedback. So please um, put your feedback on the idea to, to speed up these sessions. Uh, put your uh, feedback in, in, in the chat or uh, afterwards in, in uh, Slack channel number four. Uh, so that would be like one or one session per week online or, or one session per two weeks. So that's the idea we, we are playing with. And then also the idea we are playing with is to have um, the session for the launch of the nodes, of the network nodes, which initially was uh, planned to be um, uh, a session uh, in, in a physical uh, uh, sphere uh, to replace that also with uh, uh, an online session. So please give us your feedback, what you think about that, if you think that's a good idea, uh, yes or no, uh, and then uh, we'll also communicate uh, if uh, something changes uh, in, uh, in the planning uh, for the upcoming sessions. Um, so just to recall what uh, the subjects are for the upcoming sessions. Uh, so today we are having the introduction to the governance uh, of Pulse, and then the next session, uh, will be uh, a session uh, for uh, you, uh, for all the participants, where um, we will decide uh, collectively um, what kind of governance uh, we are uh, going to initiate for the launch of uh, Pulse Network and Pulse uh, Nodes. 
And then uh, after that session, the next topic will be then the actual launch of the network with then two following uh, sessions uh, dedicated to the deployment of uh, decentralized uh, applications on the network. So um, without further ado, um, the topic of today, uh, I introduce uh, Anne Baudouin, Victor Le Pape, and Erwin Sotiri who are going to give to you um, the topic of today, uh, which is the introduction to the governance of uh, the Pulse uh, blockchain. So, Anne, Victor, Erwin, the floor is yours. Thanks, um, Rim. As agreed, I will uh, initiate uh, the discussion by the question, why governance? And uh, maybe we can uh, move to the next slide. And um, after the agenda, the next slide, please, Vim. And here, it's just to keep in mind the specific feature of the blockchain uh, project, which is the collaborative nature. And the fact that um, as soon as you have a collaborative project, you have different view, different person, and therefore, you need to have a minimum consensus to ensure that the blockchain can operate uh, and uh, be viable. And uh, therefore, the need to agree on some rules. It's generally referred as the white paper or its charter. And of course, the complexity of such document will depend on what participants want to do with the blockchain, the business and the parameters as a uh, they are not clearly stated on the Google Drive. Um, and it also depends whether it's public, private, permissionless or not uh, blockchain. So it was really just to set the scene. There will be several participants. They all need to know in which game they will play and where they will play. So the next slide is again why this idea of why we need governance and in this respect i will refer also to a publication on steam from serene reminding us of the limits of human beings and also the fact that it is quite important as a result to have common mission and vision and he mentioned as a good example the um, terms and conditions for or the mission statement of Médecins Sans Frontières can be an example. It's to try to have a balance between the general and the specific and to give to all the participants the right level of freedom, considering the purpose while offering also a certain level of comfort to let's block and to those which are new in the blockchain world then we can move to um, yeah. the night which governance and then we have this uh, this idea which i think is quite it's a good idea that uh, victor brought forward that in fact, we, dis we will define the place where we want to play. We will define certain number of rules and this will enable us to play to pulse. Yes, so if I can, can I, I think I, I, I do this uh, second part of this on the next slide. So the idea is to so this, the stadium that you, you've recognized, it's not Josie Barton now, it's the Let's Block Stadium. Uh, so welcome, and that's the place we've been given so to play play in. So we've been given this opportunity by, by Let's Block to, um, to experiment on, on this blockchain project. So that's why we call the stadium. So the, the stadium we play in is, is the Let's Block Stadium. stadium. But then inside, let me go back to, to the previous one. Inside the stadium, the, the game we play is the pools game. And this game is, as you see, it's your rules, it's our rules. So that's what we decide. So now moving on the next slide. 
we see the importance of we, we first have to take the legal framework into account into account even if it's the boring part of the project we, we still have to think about it so let's block it's an nice bill it's related but by by law uh, from the last century but this law all basically says that the board of let's block let's block take decision and also have the authority on the activity of the association and would be accountable for decision made by by the association so things that happen within the frame of the association are in the uh, um, are made i mean the board will be made accountable for things that happen that's why we think the decision process making should be should start from a proposal with a proposal from the participants and be approved by let's block because let's block is the one accountable and then one of the reasons why is is that because we have we deal with a lot of regulation that we might not even think of today and using an experimentation it needs it needs to stay within a frame so we don't have to deal with all these authorities maybe Vim put the next picture so if we do if we have if our tokens are seen as a security for example we may have an issue with the MIFID regulation we may have to ask the CSSF if it's a, if it's a trading platform an MTF we will may have to talk to the ESMA to the CSSF again uh, and even if we have people sitting in the US we may have to to deal with some US authorities and that's something we want to avoid and that's why we think we need to thoroughly think about about the legal framework and i think on the next slide uh and we'll we'll keep on with some information yes and the idea is what should our rules contain what is the minimum content to ensure that pulse works properly and can comply with the minimum requirement it has to comply with and the first, I think, is we have to be clear on the objective of the Pulse project. And in this respect, I understand uh, the um, blockchain project, considering the initial uh, discussion with the board, is first and the most a training and playing field. And in this respect, I, in the business and that parameters, uh, no available, I think the idea would be to have course certificate being issued through the blockchain, membership cards, um, access tokens for events or referrals, and any engagement on the Let's Block website, for example, which as of today will not trigger a specific regulatory issue in areas uh, such as CSSF requirement or MIFID requirements. There is also the board members voting, and it's a project also we is taking care of with the DIO project, for example. Um, then we have the, um, the activities um, which can expand or uh, change as experience of participants will grow. And while at the beginning we may focus on on certain part or the most easy to understand part of the um, uh, feature here described going forward we could look at other uh, um, option or other use of uh, tokens but then using with regulator and the board first and most then there is the second uh, point to be clear when we will set up of our rule is the condition to participate and one of them which was discussed at the beginning of the project is let's block membership and then the second one is the it equipment that was discussed previously by Sorin and his team and put also on the google drive but what is also clear at this stage there is no specific technical knowledge required because it's a training tool and then the last point will be to determine roles and responsibilities of the various uh, parties involved in the functioning of the blockchain 
and they will be the owner, which appears normally to be let's block association. They will, will be the users and the nodes operator, which would have the rights and the obligation, which are described in the document circulated by uh, Sorin, as well as in the minutes of previous meetings. I think it would be the key point. Then what is to, keep, to be kept in mind is that these rules are not set in stone. They can be changed as things go on and as we have more participants, as we have more clarity as to what can be done or what works or doesn't work. So what is key to keep in mind is that the Pierce Working Group will be involved to propose the content, the use case, the experimentation within the boundaries previously mentioned, especially by Victor regarding regulations such as MIFI. Um, then there is also GDPR, IML, and such uh, other regulation. So within these legal boundaries, we still have game a place to play the games we want. And then I think they will be the role of the governance team is just to assist in the drafting and to say whether it falls within the boundaries or not, whether it triggers specific uh, requirements which may be too costly or not appropriate for an association such as Let's Block. And it will also be his role to find solution within this legal framework. Maybe Victor, you want to add a few points here? No, what, what I, the point I want to, to spend time on is the, the fine solution because maybe it sounds surreal, but uh, lawyers can be creative, creative. And our role, I think, as the government team is to give you as much, to give the community as much, um, the biggest playground possible to play. And we will ensure that everything that can be done can be done. And we will look for innovative solution. That's also part of the project to, to play with the, with the rules we have and try to find solution to see how far we can go with the rules we have today. So we will be also creative and also help you to keep creative and, and grow the project as, as far as you want. I don't know if there are questions at this stage. Obviously, the answer to our question is no, it's not Kev Dinson. Let me quickly uh, check um, if there are questions. Um, let me find the, the chat, if I can find that. I don't uh, see any in the chat. You don't see any in the chat? Okay. Very the well. last one is hello, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, very well. Then uh, I invite you to continue. Is that uh, next slide then? The next slide, we let Erwin um, explain uh, his viewpoint and the basic, basic consideration he wants to put forward now. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, thanks, Han. Uh, okay, well, I'll start with the uh, basic considerations, which is uh, something you've heard one billion times. I'm sorry, repetition sometimes is necessary. Blockchain uh, is, has emerged as that of the Bitcoin in 2008. It has cypherpunk, cypherpunk roots and is a disruptive idea on money creation and circulation. Now, that is not to say that every blockchain is tied to a cryptocurrency, but it means that the, it has a DNA that is embedded in every blockchain, uh, whether immediately visible or, or in a technical white paper. Uh, basically, blockchain is over, offers a large canvas for creating and um, uh, maintaining a system of voting rights, deal with property rights, and other legal agreements. So, governance in blockchains is twofold. It has one; it has the potential to change the way the organization form function by delegating more distributed and decentralized power to individuals, 
However, by doing so, it enters to, into conflict disruption with existing forms function of centralized but legally accepted organizations. So this power needs to be managed in order to protect the, the blockchain project and its participants during the incubation period where the project is the most vulnerable. Uh, and two words about tokens economy, values and not for profit. So let's imagine the blockchain in its bare stripped form. It's a secure da database for token transactions. So although transaction in block validation does not necessarily mean financial transaction, financial values references of the tokens are indispensable uh, component of blockchain. Without the above DNA of financial transaction segregation, there is no longer a blockchain rather than a simple database somehow distributed, somehow decentralized, but no longer blockchain. Um, it is very important to separate the notions not for profit, that is the actual structure of Let's Block, um, from uh, uh, the economic commercial activities that Pulse, just as any other token uh, blockchain, will necessary and unavoidably conduct. Uh, the question whether a not-for-profit not can conduct an economic activity is complex. And I have no intention here into uh, going into details because it's, um, um, I, I can do it in, in a separate document professionally or, or, or whatever, but uh, in a nutshell, I, I just want to stress out that um, it generally is accepted, it seems accepted, that member fees and donation cannot be the exclusive source of funding for non-for-profit -for structure. This implies that a certain degree of economic activity is accepted, provided that it is not conducted with the objective um, or consequence to profit to its members. This is, however, the point of departure of many di divergences in opinions as to what is permitted and to what extent. Uh, the issue is that not-for-profit organizations are used and often abused for conducting all sorts of operations, including purely commercial ones, often disguising their commercial nature through humanitarian, charitable, and other noble generic purposes. Uh, nevertheless, the existence of a transaction of a certain value in the in Pulse project should not interfere with, with uh, uh, all these considerations. Uh, as long as we are aware of its existence and stay diligent when dealing with token values, attribution, and general economy of the project. So just to, uh, just to put it, because I wanted to put it in this presentation, uh, <laughs> economic transactions are no coronavirus for a nonprofit association, although it should be kept in mind that that could potentially cause considerable legal harm if disregarded. So what do we use Polls for. So there are there is a document with use cases um, uh. actually uh, in the in the share folder. Uh, I just want to add two more, which are copyrights. Copyright in the in the extended uh, uh, notion of, of copyright, you know, uh, globally, any intellectual property, including you know the uh, IP that is hard, difficult or hardly protected through the classical system. Uh, this basically, uh, the Steam Pulse system um, is, uh, was created initially for, uh, 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 to um, um, render valuable uh, uh, content such as blogs and videos. Uh, and is, it seems like a perfect match for IP deposits. And the other one would be smart contracts, um, a, a um, um, a, a, a use case could could use the uh, uh, processualization of of, the, of smart contracts uh, in order to render them uh, um, easier to, to to develop. No. Erwin, excuse me for interrupting. Uh, we seem to be stuck on the same on the same uh, slide. Is that normal? Uh, I don't have control on slides. <laughs> okay, uh, representative democracy. Okay, now unfolding blockchain potentials um, just towards on, on what type of governance um, a representative democracy um, I've, I've stolen this table from coin monks 
basically to present the pros and cons of representative democracy. Everybody knows it's efficient, uh, but uh, on the other side, it has uh, uh, it has an issue with trust. Uh, it, it is very selfish and self-interest. Uh, it uh, encourages deceptive election practices and benefits the majority. A lack of accountability and and for the elected officials. Um, on the other hand, blockchain has rendered uh, possible the exercise of direct democracy. Um, well, the pros uh, are the votes actually count. There's total transparency. The the um, government accountability uh, government well structure in our case uh, accountability is promoted uh, there is less segregation the um, uh, directors in our in our uh, case can be reply can be replaced in their action uh, well um, people tend to have a better control over their quality of life and voting becomes less of a privilege rather than a, you know a, a responsibility uh, these are exactly um, the advantages that um, we would want to transpose into the idea of governance. Um, if we can have the next slide. Yeah, cheers. Um, now, there are four types of blockchain governance strategies. Uh, there's still another image that I've stolen from CoinMonks. We have four categories. Benevolent, that, the, uh, so uh, in the first case, uh, case, there is one director, one creator of blockchain that takes all the decisions. It is a kind of a di dictator. And is a benevolent dictator, but you know, a dictator nevertheless. Uh, on the other, the second category is the, the core development team takes all the decisions and is responsible for the, de the development of the blockchain. The third one, the third one um, is, uh, is an open governance. Um, the team, in, in this case, the team makes the final uh, decisions for the system uh, and it is selected by the users. And that's the case, for example, in uh, Hippo Ledger frameworks on Incorda. Um, a fourth category is on-chain governance. And that is, uh, uh, governance is run by smart contracts um, that are, um, uh, that are, uh, govern and run the, uh, the decisions uh, that are based on code. Uh, it was the case for the DAO, for example. So uh, going back to Steemit, uh, it has, uh, Steemit has been, because it, it is, as I understand, it is our inspiration for the uh, for Pulse. Um, it has been widely criticized recently for uh, its uh, governance, um, and it actually uses a combination of uh, open governance with uh, with a dev team um, type of governance. So um, it clearly all the governance models have their trade offs. Um, there is no perfect system to be found. Uh, when it comes to polls, a choice is rather uh, what can be built uh, within the means that we have and within the time frame that we have. Uh, my personal preference and suggestion for polls would be an initial uh, open government model, transitioning towards an on-chain government model when it becomes technically and financially feasible. Um, I think this slide is, is, is yeah. Uh, can we, uh, um, voting system, I think is the other slide. Um, yeah, so governance, what governance means essentially a voting system. Um, and there we have the ideas of individual versus collectivity. Uh, I've taken this um, image of uh, mutton versus boards syndromes. So um, muttons is, you know, they gather around one that uh, there's this, uh, I've seen this in Greece. I don't know if you 
<laughs> where where uh, there is a modern that is troubled by something and there is a, suddenly there is a, the whole uh, um, uh, the whole crowd of moderns that gathers around him without properly understanding why there is a there is a call for uh, for trouble and and actually it's very similar to um, um, what, what we see in, in social media uh, where an individual individual launches a proposal and the other try to vote for for this proposal without having an idea or understanding of the issue uh, but the, it only it is only based on the belief that that individual is correct and the thing is that individuals get it wrong quite often and collectivity is there to make adjustments however and then we have the the, the, the board syndrome uh, collectivity is mostly wrong uh, most of the time and uh, individuals are the ones who make uh, society advances so, so there is a balance to find to be found between uh, individual power individual initiative and collectivity that is able to make adjustments um, one way to uh, to find this balance is to weight the votes uh, um, so ca for example casual voters can carry less weight than regular voters in issues of approaches carry more than simple uh, participants old uh, you know uh, early early uh, token holders or voters uh, carry more than the new uh, wallets with more polls carrying more than the new and one that I find interesting is that um, the weakest from all the above parameter parameters uh, is the one that is taken into account. So this is useful to push the participant to have all the above qualities at the same level. Um, um, there is an issue with the simple majority. You know, it's, it's, um, can we, yeah, thanks. Uh, there's an issue with the simple majority and um, the models, uh, a model that I have found interesting and, and I can invite you to, to discuss it, is quadratic voting. And this is a system where individuals allocate votes to, uh, to express a degree of their preferences rather than the direction of their preferences. So this is in order to mitigate the majority rule decision issue, uh, to avoid uh, the uh, the uh, to have important decision taken through a, a simple weak majority. Um, so now back to blockchain management governance. Um, Erin, yeah, that's uh, the I got Sorin uh, who would like to intervene. Uh, Sorin, uh, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I wanted to intervene on uh, with respect with the slide uh, with the slide um, about the types of blockchain governance. This one, yes, this one. Um, so <clears throat> I, I I think this is important. Um, in my opinion, um, none of this is satisfactory. And basically, what uh, what we try to do with Pulse is to, um, uh, in a sense, experiment and show that it works. Uh, a fifth one that does not appear here, which is more, which is closer to um, actual uh, democratic uh, uh, representative democracy uh, from from the one that we know from uh, from our societies. Uh, where instead, for instance, it's let's say close to the to the one that is uh, called here core development team, except that here the core development team uh, has nothing to do with the governance and replace you replace that with the um, let's say the, the the body politic of the of the community, which in our case is approximated with the let's block board um, that substitutes here for the core development team so the pulse blockchain is intended not as a computocracy where the the it people um, take the make the decisions but as an it system where the it people do what they do best meaning uh, 
maintain, operate, uh, evolve the IT system, and the decisions are made by the representatives of the body politic. In our case, the body politic is the members of Let's Block, and their representatives are the board of Let's Block. That is what I wanted to say. So from, from my from my point of view is uh, every discussion is open there uh, those are we had to put labels into categories and there were four convenient labels that I took if there's a fifth or a sixth one I mean we we all we are all for it uh, we, the idea is of course to invent a model that is convenient for for pulse and all the ideas are welcome there these are only suggestions and labels to provoke the, 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 the discussion. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to discuss this uh, afterwards if we if we go into more detail or even if we make a, a separate meeting for this. Um, so blockchain management governance, um, there are con constraints and parameters that we have to, into, we have to take into account, uh, but we have to determine the strategies that are built uh, around an initial vision. So we, um, we must um, Okay, sorry, I just lost the uh, um, We must take into account that Let's Block is a, is a nonprofit uh, structure uh and it uh, it positions itself as the uh as the governance model in the same time it needs to shield the eventual liabilities uh, but also avoid the analysis paralysis uh, type of decision that you know, a blockchain controller would have to face so the solution there uh, could be simple and that is lose the controls um, that means making the uh, uh, blockchain project projects, and I, I stress the, the plural, um, uh, in order to um, to attract instead of enlisting users. Uh, what does this mean? Um, um, Governance of many other of, of many crypto projects they fail because a group of individuals hold back the decision power and use it for their own private interest. This should not be the case in, in Pulse because uh, we are all here in, in a non-profit structure. The, the interest that uh, uh, economical interest that uh, in other structures are an obstacle for a blockchain project, they uh, try to enlist people in, into into uh, uh, their ideas. Uh, w once the past blockchain becomes mature or public, uh, Let's Block could gradually step back from the decision making uh, that maintain an effective control on pulse. Uh, it nevertheless remains as a nonprofit structure that maintains the code and the nodes through uh, decentralized consensus, just as the Bitcoin and Ethereum foundations do with their blockchain. Um, as initial decisions of governance structures, um, Let's Block would gradually give back its power to all members and participants of the past project. It nevertheless, uh, it is Let's Block task to decide how uh, it would give back and uh, this decision power and to make sure that it stays uncorrupted and does not rapidly degrade into another digital blockchain. Um, so the idea is instead of having one project is to have a sandbox of many projects. Um, it seems clear to me that the initial mention uh, to create uh, the initial intention to create through Pulse is a private sandbox, sandbox in order to create awareness of blockchain technology. However, a sandbox is always a transitional safe means to a full di dimensional playground. So the question is how we can set pulse develop ideas free. 
all transactions and use cases that we can set up will ultimately make sense if the, if the general public uses it instead of a handful of selected actors. So therefore the question is therefore how the participants will develop uh, perhaps go public from a sandbox project. We can either move the entire pulse to public or we can move bits of it to public or rather set them free to public. Uh, moving the entire pulse project would have to determine token economy strategies and we will have to face regulation and we have to face the liabilities issue all the all the things that uh, let's block members are not probably ready at this point uh, to make as a decision uh, and it's not containable in a non-profit multi-interest structure such as let's block um, therefore moving bits of pulse public seems to be a sensible approach to push develop, developed ideas to public. Pulse would serve, therefore, as a non-profit incubator or platform or sandbox uh, to launching blockchain-related projects, just as the initial intention was. Uh, I took this um, idea of forks because um, uh, it's, it's easy to um, uh, to grasp for, for people uh, familiar with technology. Forks, in this case, would serve a dual purpose. It would serve to create the specific projects within Pulse and also to launch them once they mature in the Pulse sandbox, to launch them to the public if the uh, people who are actually responsible for these projects wish to do so. It's, a, it's, a, it's an entry and exit sandbox logic uh, and of course, it will obey to different uh, rules, but uh, that's the basic idea. Um, so what comes to uh, Let's Block governance? So Let's Block would serve as the last barrier and moderator. So participants are approved. They are free to, initi to initiate, conduct and run every other project, every sort of project similar to the way GitHub does. Let's block would exceptionally intervene to moderate harmful behaviors. Uh, ultimately, with the power, of course, they hope uh, will never have to exercise, which is the exclusion of participants or shutting down the project. Um, ideally, decisions uh, either from the uh, uh, project managers or let's block should be made through a voting system voting systems that we uh, spoke about. Um, participants can, can leave or go public with their own structure and liability, of course, um, because the sandbox within Let's Block will, as far as I can see, will always stay private and, and permission. Um, the, but they can use fork uh, they can use a fork to uh, to uh, pursue on the, of course, the um, uh, a set of rules that, that are pretty agreed with the, those participants to uh, to launch to the public and and to go independently. Um, now, uh, legalities, legalities. Yes, there are a different set of rules that we have to set up, which are terms and conditions for participation to polls. Uh, that I need to set the basic rules for partic participating into Pulse projects, identify and detail, uh, detail the potential liabilities here, terms and conditions for creating projects, setting up the rules for creating and running projects, provide a legal framework for project creators and participants, um, and terms and conditions of forking to the general public, uh, these terms will be provided as a departure condition from the Pulse, sand, pulse Sandbox. Um, eventual privileges or donation on future uh, derived projects may be inserted. This is just a suggestion. It's not. It's not a. It's not meant to be as a as a uh, uh, as any sort of decision at this point, of course. And finally, um, a word on IP. On IP deriving from Pulse projects. My personal view is that the IP should be made, made available to everyone on the specific condition of a common creative license. We have to, to, to discuss about this. 
the general idea is to make the projects free for everyone and, and uh, use them under some conditions that we have to determine. Uh, and we'll have uh, we'll have to assign this task to to a specific group that will be drafting this sort of specific license or take the decision to take one of the existing uh, Creative Commons license. Uh, we'll have to discuss this at, you know, when when the first use case becomes effective. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. I think that's it. We can now perhaps um, um, discuss some of the ideas. Thank you very much, uh, Anne, Victor, uh, Erwin, for this uh, comprehensive introduction to um, uh, Paul's uh, governance. Um, so what is going to happen now? Uh, first of all, we are going to have Q&A. Uh, and then uh, in the coming uh, days and weeks, uh, we will be uh, posting further details on, on uh, what the options are for, for choosing the governance uh, model. Um, and then um, we'll uh, engage in, in the Slack channel 04 uh, with you to, to answer questions and have interactions and start evolving towards uh, a common decision on, on what kind of uh, governance we are going to, to implement. So I open the floor now. Uh, first of all, um, maybe a technical team, uh, Sorin, Julian, Julian, Alexandru, Pablo, um, do you guys would like to add something to, to this uh, governance subject now? I may. Yes, of course, Julian, go ahead. Uh, only one remark related to fork, to forks, because at least for me, I have a different understanding about what it means to fork in blockchain project. And I see that here was presented like being the fork of the application that can be developed on a specific blockchain. Uh, and if it is like this, to the possibility to fork a, an application or a decentralized application, we don't. I don't see here something to reinvent. It's exactly it's already happening in this market to have uh, forks over forks for applications. But if we go deeper in the fork of the the protocol itself, uh, this should be a topic to discuss on it, but not related to application. I mean, uh, if we see the risk of uh, what we launch now to be forked as a blockchain as layer, as a blockchain level, uh, I think this is a topic that it should be taken into consideration. But if we look only to the application side, personally, I don't see any issue if a developer uh, or an entity wants to start to develop a, an application on Pulsar blockchain, and later he wants to uh, move it to another another uh, blockchain. Yeah, I, I personally use it more as a, as an application fork, uh, but um, actually a, blo a blockchain fork could yeah could be could be useful in some particular situations. Mostly not in gen in general, but. In some situations, could be uh, could be something to be discussed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an idea. In in my slides, I have used it uh, as a application fork, which means that uh, the code can be used in in similar projects, similar ideas to have them either with a separate blockchain or or with a um, uh, with a separate specific spoke for the code. But forking a running blockchain, of course, is problematic. So, um, yeah, I, I understand your concern. Oh, and, and one simple solution in our case, because we have this voting power in the Pulsar technology, in the Pulsar blockchain, I think if a fork happens, we have the power to vote for closing it. Because the fork will start from the base addresses and the base account that we already have them implemented. 
mm -hmm. and having the entire voting power and agreeing between us in the Pulse blockchain to shut down a fork, technically it's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I see. I see. I, yeah, I agree with you. It's, um, it would create a, a governance problem if, uh, if you would allow all sort of forks and uh, it would become very quick and anarchy. So yes, uh, I see what you mean. I got a question of uh, Sam uh, in the chat. So Sam is asking um, if he has already a server subscription or a server or an uh, RPI4, then uh, is there already a link to the Pulse installation package? I guess this question is not related to governance, right? Exactly, but nevertheless, it's a question. Uh, the installation package, of course, is not yet ready because in order to prepare an installation package, we have to agree on the, on the governance part to know how do we bootstrap the network. So this is my, my answer. Sorin, you would like to intervene? Go ahead. Um, let me unmute you. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I... Uh try to rebound on, on, on that, on what Julian has just said. Uh, to be frank, um, I expected this session to at least um, uh, start, kick the discussion, kick off the discussion on the governance parameters, even if we had not reached a definitive conclusion. I mean, uh, I, I discovered that, um, yeah, we are at very, very early stages in the discussion. I, I expected that at least one of these presentations would um, get down to more, more down to earth, uh, to more concrete things like how is a decision uh, reached from a, from a technical point of view and what, how is that mapped into the system and therefore, in order to have the system behave as we uh, want it to behave, what, uh, what parameters do we need to, uh, to set and to what values, what values to give to those attributes, to those parameters. Um, so as Julian said, we need that in order to progress because now the, all the discussion that I've seen is uh, more theoretical and more high level than I expected. Yeah, but I believe it's, it's, it was important to, uh, to, to give a, a global picture, I would say, to the concern about governance. And now uh, in the q and it's, it's the right time to be more concrete. So I would suggest, let's assume that we have one application, which is um, the, the voting for our next um, uh, AGM, then how it would work and what type of uh, governance could we have so that maybe people have a, a better view of the options. We could, we could take this example maybe. So Sorin, do you have any uh, comment on that? And if you could lead maybe? Yeah, so the first, um, the first, um, question that I would ask, for instance, is, um, let's say you, you, we are going to perhaps, I, I think it's, it's safe to assume that we are going to um, uh, create uh, users. Um, and so the, we, we agreed already that the, the owners will be the, the members of the board of uh, Let's Block. Uh, so questions that we ask in the governance parameters is, can an owner create another owner? Uh, yes or no. Uh, then um, owners can create users, seems pretty safe to assume that. But another question is, can a user create another user? Yes or no. These are basic questions uh, that relate to uh, let's say, to how the, the community of users 
expands and um, and grows uh, going forward. So these are practical questions that need to be answered. Yes. Can we, can we have a, a, a list perhaps of, of all your questions that you uh, would wish to have an answer? So perhaps we can have a list of those questions and we- we'll, Yeah, they are in the governance parameter uh, document. Yes, this one, yeah, yeah. We will share it. But I guess it's a good example to, uh, to uh, maybe to continue to dig in so that we better understand what are the, uh, the impact and effect. But coming back to your example, like why would user, so being any um, Let's Block member willing to participate in the project, create new users? This I don't get. Because for me, the owner would be the Let's Block um, board members. And whenever some, uh, someone wants to participate, well, we need to make sure that uh, he fills in the condition. The, the most important one is being a, a member and having paid uh, his, um, his membership fees. And then we would create him as a user, right? Yeah, or the other way around. It's what what you uh, what you have in uh, uh, the the best analogy that I have in mind right now. It might not be the most appropriate, but is the in the in the let's say transactional world you have the so-called try before you buy. So uh, you can have indeed, as you said, a, a barrier at the entry. You pay your fee and you pay to play, and you become a user after you've paid, or this is your decision, of course. Uh, you can say, look, you can become a user and get see get to see a, a, a glimpse of the benefits of, mm -hmm. uh, among others, playing with the with the blockchain and experimenting, doing transactions on on a blockchain and seeing what it is. And if you like it, then you can pay your fee and become a member. It's the the, the, the two the two uh, the two let's say marketing approaches exist in the in the commercial world and I, I i don't know if they are completely uh, analogous with with what we have here but i think they are not absurd it's not absurd to do this comparison no but um when it is monique sorry i think one of the elements is also how much effort and time has to go into chasing people then afterwards um and we want to keep this administratively least burdensome as possible the membership fees are very low, um, so it's just easier to put the preconditions and then address them. Yeah, yeah but it, this is a question that needed asked, and yeah. you, we need the answer, and you you provide the answer here. This is what we wanted to have, but we could not have guessed that before discussing it, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. That's why having an example is, uh, is very helpful. Then coming back to the governance, I understand that there are several ways in terms of what is the weight for the voting power, right? Yeah, and, exactly. And I guess it really depends. Like, for example, would it be possible to have a different type of governance depending on the project? I... I, I, I can give you an answer here. Uh, if we think to a specific project, I think the governance can be implemented in the application level, not at the blockchain level. Exactly. This is the answer I wanted to, uh, to yes. have. To but that does not preclude the fact that we still need a, a lower layer of governance at the blockchain level. Correct. So just bearing in mind that we have two levels, right? We have the basement somehow, which is uh, the infrastructure, which is a blockchain. And on top of it, we would have applications. So coming and we should not, uh, we should bear in mind that there are two different levels and we could play around. Like, for example, uh, uh, blockchain level, we could say that it's like, uh, depending on how much pulse you have, would be your voting power. But in my uh, first app, which would be the voting uh, of the next AGM, it would be one user, one uh, vote, right? Yes, but the, the, that is here. I think that this is uh, this is a, a 
for for the for the the, the discussion at hand, this is a diversion because indeed yes, you can have. But here we need in order to start the network, we need the the, the values that are being to be coded into the blockchain for the blockchain level. We'll discuss the one person one vote at the application level when the network will be up and running. But, but don't forget, sorry, here is it. The question is like, I don't think there are any silly questions. And here it's to debate and to explain it's a training, right? So um, I guess it's important that people understand what is about governance, the different levels. And here we had the answer, right? Yeah, OK. I just, well, <clears throat> Maybe you can you can suggest what would be for you based on your experience in terms of uh, the, the the governance solution that um, Erwin uh, presented. What would be the best for you? Uh, what are the pros and cons? Yes, as, as I as I've tried to uh, to, to uh, say when, when I uh, intervened, uh, for me. The, the governance uh, setting that is most promising is one that uh, tries to be uh, relatively close to uh, the way our democratic societies are being governed, how the decisions are reached in our democratic societies. And that happens with um, users electing representatives and with the representatives um, making decisions. So something that, um, let's say, is relatively analogous with how our democratic societies function and not something that uh, mimics the existing, to me, quite uh, unconvincing uh, blockchain models with the benevolent dictator, with the computocracy with the, where the, the decisions are made by IT people who happen to be very good at IT, but not necessarily very good at, um, at uh, leading a, a group of humans. Um, the open governance that, uh, that um, was the third in the, in the list of uh, models Erwin presented, I, I do not see it clearly. I, I do not have experience with it. I do not know of, of any open uh, hyperledger fabric nor corda project. All, all of those I've heard about are closed project projects, uh, completely owned. So it's it's a bit of a of a contradiction in terms of for a closed project to talk of open governance. It might exist on paper, but I haven't seen anything. And uh, and the fourth uh, on chain governance. My personal opinion. I think it's it's a not a very good idea, but uh, then again, yeah, we might experiment with it a, a, as well. So yeah, the the we have the, the model I think is more appropriate is a fifth one, which um, hues close as close as possible. To, uh, to how we function in society, in democratic rep in representative democracies. So that's, that's the, the representative democracy. That's first, basically the first model is the benevolent dictator. So basically you elect representatives and they represent you. And that's, that's exactly the benevolent dictator. That's the um, first model. And then what do you call Russia? with Putin. Oh, no. <laughs> For me, the benevolent dictator is Russia or China. Well, that is uh, benevolent dictator. The delegation of power, basic, uh, that was the first, I mean, that's how I understood it. Maybe, I mean, we can put labels on different things, but uh, um, I, what I understood is the first model is the uh, model that uh, our old society has functioned from, uh, you know, since the uh, French Revolution. Basically, you elect people that represent you uh, well, a dictator by definition is not elected because he's a dictator. Right. Uh, in that sense, yes. But is is somehow a, a, um, a group of people that act as a, as a, that have dictatorial decisions. 
but you can change them. Whereas you cannot change Vitalik Buterin, for instance. Vitalik Buterin will forever be the benevolent dictator of Ethereum because he invented it. You cannot change that. You cannot, well, right? Well, actually, in the slides, uh, Ethereum wasn't as the first. Uh, Ethereum was uh, uh, as the second model. Uh, as I, let me check the slides. Um, Yeah, I think it's the core development. Uh, if you can, yeah, the other slide, just right. No, no, you're right. You're actually right. Yeah, Ethereum is is a yeah in the benevolent dictator. That's that's true. Yeah, okay, you're right. Well, I mean, the idea we have a question is from um, Vincent to, Emmanuel. Um, unmute. So Matron, go ahead. Uh, unmute. I think you have to unmute also from from your side. In the meantime, um, so what we are going to do is that um, so indeed with this general introduction to um, governance um, comes also the very specific parameters for uh, the nodes for uh, uh, how you can acquire polls. Um, what you can do in terms of voting with uh, polls and so on and so on, and how we are going to determine the parameters in order to reflect the governance model that we decide upon. So what I propose that we do is that in the coming uh, days and, and weeks, we use the channel, the Slack channel 04, to launch uh, proposals, proposals of these uh, parameter settings with a, in that proposal, a translation, um, what that means in terms of governance model and effects and uh, strategic objectives, okay? And then people can start reflecting on these proposals. So proposals could come from the technical team, from the governance team, from, from the uh, business uh, applications team, from participants, from anybody. And so that could be a, a basis from which we can start interacting, uh, reflecting, and then finally uh, decide. So let's use uh, Slack channel 04 to launch specifically um, uh, propositions, uh, governance uh, model propositions. Um, Bim, there's quite a lot of um, discussion in the chat channel, so maybe we can just invite people to discuss some of those things as well before jumping off. Yeah, uh, so we have, first of all, uh, Maton that, that would like to intervene. Go ahead. Uh, yes, can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, Hello, good evening, everybody. Yeah, so basically, I think there are two types of questions concerning governance, well, as far as I understand. Uh, the first one is, uh, who do we let enter the blockchain? Apparently, it's only let's block members, if I, if I correctly understand. And the second question is, is once the, the, the blockchain is dropped up and running, who takes decision? And I think, in my view, uh, the philosophy of blockchain is the more useful you are to the blockchain, the more pulse you give, the more, uh, I mean, for, the, for Bitcoin and CPU, but in our case, maybe it could be pulse or anything else. So the more useful you are, the more involved you are, uh, the more, the higher you say should be, actually, your vote should be. How do you determine usefulness? Uh, the utility, basically. Uh, well, I'm a utilitarian philosopher. So basically, utility is not something we define a, pro, a priori. It is something uh, which is going to be defined afterwards. In our case, uh, it can be quantified as, as polls, basically. Uh, I don't know. It basically for, for Bitcoin, it's quite it's quite easy. Utility is CPU power. The more CPU power you give, 
the more useful you are to the to the to the network, and therefore the more rewarded you get. The more you want to, um, for, for, for Pulse, basically, I, I'm pretty new in, in the Pulse Academy, so I can't say answer yet, but I think it could be, uh, well, the, the, for, 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 for instance, for, for, um, uh, it, it can be uh, about the value of contents you, uh, you get or your personal involvements. I, I don't know how to quantify it, Me but metrics, I have no idea at the state, but that's the importance of utility, basically. It's um, a criterion. The more useful you are, the more voting rights you get. And then you... Yes, I understand, yeah, but the metrics would be uh, how to quantify uh, the utility. That's, that's a bit of, I mean, would it be uh, uh, um, with regard to content, the amount of content that you provide in that case? Uh, well, it, it could be anything, basically. I think it's one of the questions that we could agree on and uh, to what extent uh, do we consider that the user is useful? I think it should be something, uh, well, the decision should be broad-based, basically, because it is blockchain. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's the, the philosophy of the blockchain as you view it, it's, it's a matter of involvement. Uh, it's um, the, the more, it's like Steam, that apparently, the more involved you get, the more voting rights you get. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the comparison with, with Bitcoin is it's quite, uh, it's, better, it's about CPU power. That's what Nasato Shinakamoto says in his paper. It's uh, CPU power. In our case, it, it could be pulse. I mean, we can quantify pulse as, uh, uh, for instance, if, if we use um, polls of the sandbox, uh, if the, the goal is to promote uh, innovative projects, I mean, the more innovative you are, the, the more useful you are. I, I don't know. I don't have a, any answer today, but I think if we reason in terms of utility, no matter of what utility uh, actually denotes, uh, I think it's a good, good uh, point to start with. Because it's trying to implement all uh, existing patterns, such as representative democracy or direct democracy, well, it works. But it's also based upon, upon utility. You know, representative democracy is a utility-based system, um, but it's in the real world, in the, in the blockchain world. We should envision utility in a different manner. So that, uh, we have, we have a, an interesting um, comment and, and question from from Heidelch. Um would you like to um, intervene or would you like me to uh, repeat the question you put in uh, the channel, in the chat? I'll unmute you in case you would like to intervene. Otherwise, I'll uh, repeat the question. Um, so the question is uh, how uh, the community is going to value the utility. And um, okay, that, that is, uh, and I'm going to try to answer the question and uh, governance team, technical team, please intervene afterwards uh, to, uh, to add on uh, my comments. So that's part of um, exactly the, the propositions uh, we, we are going to post in the Slack channel 04. So it's about knowing uh, what the, uh, the pulse generation rate is, okay? Mm -hmm. By uh, validating transactions, by being a node, um, you uh, mine, you receive a pulse, um, and then in the total uh, supply of pulse, uh, each pulse will have a value and a utility for engaging in other uh, decentralized applications on uh, on the Pulse blockchain, okay? So the value and the utility or the value of the utility is derived from, um, yeah, the, the relative um, uh, positioning of, of one Pulse to the whole uh, supply. Does that answer a little bit the question? Yes. I think if, if I can intervene, I think it could be interesting in, in this project. And I remember a discussion we had, um, uh, Vim, Vim and I, about, about this, that we should still have, because we obviously no one wants to have the more CPU power 
because we don't want to recreate the Bitcoin. It doesn't make sense uh, in this experiment because we already know how it works. But we could still give room for users to maybe give, you know, like, like uh, as we give likes on Facebook, maybe people, people could have the possibility to remunerate uh, in a sense, to give a like to an ID that they find good and this will um, add ultimately give this person that, goes the, that brought the most to the community, according to the community, a bigger say when decisions are taken. Somebody else who would like to ask a question? Let me check the chat. Um, yeah, so sorry, exactly. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, post uh, a shared document, a shared uh, Google Sheet in 04. And then on each sheet, anybody can uh, insert a uh, governance uh, set of parameters and the um, translation in what that gives us a governance model. Um, and uh, technical team, uh, let's block board, uh, governance team, uh, participants, um, everybody can make a proposition and then uh, further interact on that. Let me check uh, if we have further questions. Um, so Matthias is going. Bye Matthias, see you soon. Hear you soon. Um, are there other questions? So please go ahead. Um, I'll give it a few more minutes. Are there further? I, I have a question if I may. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, it's clear that we have multiple parameters to decide on. Uh, what would be the process to decide on each specific parameter? Because um, we will open this discussion on Slack. We will have multiple uh, versions. We'll have uh, discussions. But in the end, how do we reach consensus? Well, well, the way I saw it is uh, our next meeting, there would be votes. Like we would have a list of uh, elements that would constitute the parameters that we need to decide. And, and I would suggest that there would be votes. How do we vote? Here it would be one person, one vote, I would suggest. No, I mean, as a, as a mechanism, as a methodo methodology, ah, we, the, we will vote online. Yeah, like uh, the same we did uh, um, during our AGM, you know, to vote uh, some, uh, some additional person in the board. We use, I don't remember, Wim, what was the, the software we used? To ask? Yeah, I should, uh, should check. Yeah, but we would have a, a, a solution, online solution. <laughs> I just don't want to, but I don't think it's for us to to vote a solution. Uh, I think it's rather for the Let's Block uh, board to to uh, cho choose a solution. I would rather prefer the the situation where we suggest different, propose different solution, and Let's Block make makes a choice because ultimately, it's the board who actually um, has the responsibility to to make that decision. Yeah, of course. I understand your point. I guess it's a matter of the way we uh, we present it. But of course, like if at the end, the the solution, like the way I see it, is that the way we would present the the questions, it would be in line with what we would accept as board members first, and then in terms of. Uh, of uh, legal aspect, I would say is that we would ratify somehow the suggestions that were voted by the, the participants. Would it be okay this way? Well, oh, sorry, I think that we can have a look at it afterwards, but I, I think um, that um, it's probably right by Erwin that it'd be a, a, a recommendation vote. Um, mm. So it's a little bit like, you know, a, a committee vote that's then put to the board as in, you know, this proposal got the most votes, this is the second votes. Um, okay. But then the board has to decide which one they 
actually can live with and think is in the best interest of the association. People will have different interests here. Yeah. I guess we speak for the same in just a matter of the way we present it, but I, I, I totally agree that we need to be in line with uh, the legal uh, obligation and uh, liabilities the board members have. Victor, would you like to intervene or is that a raised hand from before? From before, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No. Very well. So what time is it for the moment? It's uh, eight o'clock. Maybe one last question, if somebody would like to intervene. Uh, let me check the, the chat. Um, okay, no further questions. Uh, Sorin, please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> in the governance parameters, we were talking about initial supply. Can we, can we perhaps at least uh, kick off the discussion? So can you perhaps, Wim, introduce the topic of, uh, because this is one of the first things that need to be, to be decided. We, we need to initialize the blockchain with an initial supply of pools tokens. Uh, so it might help uh, crystallize a little bit, perhaps the reflections and uh, in preparation for the next uh, well, of I, propose, I propose that, that we make that part of uh, the propositions that we are going to post in the Slack channel. Now, the initial uh, supply, as, as you're mentioning, uh, Sorin, this is a thing that we have been discussing uh, some time ago. And indeed, that has to be put uh, in the context of, in the larger context of uh, the objective that we formulate for a governance proposition. Um, so that will be, I propose, a part of the propositions that we will be posting in a Slack channel. Four propositions could be coming from you guys, could be coming from us, from the participants. So, um, yeah. I will have to reflect myself on uh, the question to uh, become specific on your question. Yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, at this point, really the context is very important because at this point, 10 million or, or 10 billion, it, it doesn't make any difference. And uh, well, except that one number is greater than the other, but uh, you, you need some context. Uh, probably we need to understand why uh, would we would put this number rather than this number and what is the reserve what is the economic uh, behind it uh, we need context yeah definitely okie dokie um, if no further questions then I propose that uh, we leave it there for today so uh, we invite you all to uh, follow up the communication in Slack channel number four and uh, to be active and engage. Uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask questions um, and uh, propose. So um, wishing you all a very nice evening and then uh, we'll also continue communicating on um, next date uh, and potentially um, speeding up of uh, the sessions. So thank you very much for uh, all your contributions. Thank you for participating. Wishing you a nice evening and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everyone, bye. Bye. Thank you, bye.